Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about retroorbital flexures. It is one of the method for blood correction in the rat as well as mice. Let's see the introduction. Now, before that, we should know the anatomy of rat eye. This picture shows the anatomy of rat eye and the blood supply to the eye. It consists of superficial temporal vein followed by the retroorbital sinus supraorbital vein, ocular angle vein, and dorsal nasal vein. In this process, we have to puncture this retroorbital sinus to collect the blood sample. This method is commonly used technique, which is used in many of the labs for immediate withdrawal of the blood sample. This technique required the expertise. A person should have a good skill to withdraw the blood. In this case, the animals, though this technique is used for those animals that do not have a large veins or prominent veins. This is limited to the rodents with large venous sinus, that is mouse and flexors, that is rat, posterior to the eye. And this technique is carried out under suitable anesthesia. Let's see the procedure. For this technique, we need heparinized or non heparinized micro hematocrit capillary tube. Next, the animal is held by the back of the neck, and the loose skin of the head is tightened with the thumb and middle finger so as to get the prominent eyesight. Then the tip of the capillary tube is placed at the middle canthus of the eye under the nictating membrane. The capillary is slightly rotates. The eyeball itself remains injured. This uh, uninjured, this has to be taken care. As soon as the sinus is punctured, the blood enters the tubing by capillary action and the blood can be collected. The tube is withdrawn after the sufficient amount of blood collection. Then the slight pressure with a piece of gauze on the eyeball is used to prevent the further bleeding from the eye. Some precautions are necessary while doing this technique. There is a chances that eye infection, so at most care should be taken. The no, the if the veins from the nose is get damaged, then bleeding from the nose can be observed. Proper anesthetic level should be monitored. Then periorbital swelling, redness and or hematoma formation may be occurs post blood withdrawal. There is a chances of bleeding. So while withdrawing the blood, maximum care is required to avoid the injury as well as the infection in the animal. Maximum amount of blood withdrawal at one time is 1% 1 of the animal body weight. And if first time use one eye, then next time use second eye to withdraw the blood. Now actually how this process is carried out, let's Well, good. Huh? Well, good. 